Alvin York, Henry Tandy, Baron von Richthofen, Desmond Doss. These are just some of the names that evoke a certain feeling, a certain sense of awe at some of the things that they were able to accomplish in wartime. I would humbly suggest that the name that I'm going to be talking about today needs to be right up there. Her name was Malunka Savage, and she was a Serbian soldier who for most of the last 100 years nobody's ever heard of, at least outside of the Balkans. But hers is a name that deserves to be remembered. And thanks to our friends at Sabaton, we know a little bit more of her story. On their new album, they've got a song called Lady of the Dark that tells some of the story of Malunka Savage. So we're going to watch a, a video, and I'll throw up a link in the description to the original uh, content creator who made this video. And I believe they're using clips from, there's a movie, I think it came out about 10 years ago, that was made about the life of Malunka Savage, about the time that people were starting to rediscover her story. And I'll also throw up a link because our friend Indy Nidell over at the Great War Channel did like a four or five minute video clip on Malunka Savage. And it'll tell you a little bit more of her story. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and watch this and uh, we'll talk a little bit about this remarkable uh, woman who became the most decorated female soldier in recorded history. It's, this is Lady of the Dark. So I want to stop right here because they're diving right into one of the most well-known stories. So a little background. We know some of her story. Uh, the Serbians are involved in a couple of wars called the Balkan Wars in the lead up to World War I. And her brother was drafted into Serbian service during the Balkan Wars. And some say she went along with her brother. Other stories say she went in his place. But either way, she went when her brother was drafted. And she gave her name as Milun Savage rather than Milunka. And she passed herself off as a guy. She cut her hair. She you know, wrapped her chest. She did all the things that you normally you know, see in movies about women trying to pass themselves off as men. She really did those things. And among other things, she pulled off a couple of pretty much Alvin York type stories. Uh, this one in particular, I believe she captured like 20 some Germans uh, with a grenade. She did. She dove into the trench. She, you know, she charged right into the attack. Uh, this happened at least twice, both times capturing. I don't know if this was Germans in this case. It would have been uh, somebody else. But I think later on, some Hung Austro-Hungarians or Germans she, uh, she takes. So at least two different times she captures 20 plus uh, of the enemy. And this is one of those situations. A great hero who has wandered through the dark. She stood before you. On that metal shining light, lost in time, returning to the light. Bow before this lady, fight for life. Oh, sister, raise your hand for the lady of the dark. Soldier with no will to kill with the philanthropic heart. So, uh, yeah, it says here she applied under the name Milun Savage. She said that she was a man in order to be allowed to fight. Uh, of course, later on, you see her in uniform with her hair longer, uh, not being hidden anymore. And you see the stripes on her shoulder. So she, uh, she gets wounded nine times between the Balkan Wars and the Great War, World War I. Uh, after she was wounded, she had already been promoted by this point. I think she'd been promoted to corporal. Uh, she had already been decorated for valor. Several times she received Serbia's highest medal for valor, among medals from many other nations. She gets wounded. She's sent to the hospital, and it's there that they discover that she's female. And uh, they don't want to you know, bust her for it. They don't want to get her in trouble for it because she's already proven herself to be an incredibly brave and capable soldier. 
So the idea is we're going to send her to the nursing corps with all the other women so she can continue to serve, but not on the front lines. Well, she insists that she is going to continue to serve as a soldier. And even though she's been wounded, even though she's in the hospital, she stands at attention and her superior officer tells her, well, I'm going to take a day to think this over. And she basically tells him, I'm going to stand here and wait. And she stands at attention and waits. And within an hour, he made the decision to send her back to the front lines. And she goes back into combat. And when the First World War breaks out, she's actually transferred to one of the elite Serbian units. I think it's called the Iron Squadron. I think it talks about that in the song. Yeah, serve the Iron Squadron. So there you have it. This is like, uh, you know, whatever your nation's elite fighting force is, this is that unit for Serbia. And she gets transferred to that unit. So this is not, at this point, just uh, some woman who's keeping her gender on the down low and is just trying to get by. She is a celebrated hero of war, and she's recognized uh, for that. Uh, and repeatedly sent back and given opportunities to fight even after being wounded over and over and over again. So I can't help, you know, having just told the story of Alvin York, and I'll throw up a link at the end on the screen if you haven't seen my video from the site of Alvin York's Medal of Honor. Uh, please check that out. Uh, I can't help but see the parallels between Alvin York uh, and Maluka Savage. Now, uh, there's some differences, obviously, but uh, in particular, here's a woman who was ridiculously brave, who had no fear of going into combat, who achieves things that on paper just seem ridiculous, capturing dozens of soldiers and doing it a couple of times, getting wounded nine times, uh, but also not somebody who by nature enjoyed killing people. You know, when you read biographies and you read stories in the military, there are often guys who are described as killers, who they, they might not necessarily like enjoy killing, but they're good at it and they have no problem with it. Maluka Savage is not one of those people. You know, Alvin York was the same way. Even as he's killing a couple of dozen Germans, even as he's achieving these great feats, the whole time he's thinking to myself, how can I do this while killing the fewest number of people possible? And he keeps yelling at them, telling them to surrender because he doesn't want to kill any more of them than he has to. Same thing with Maluka Savage. There are opportunities, opportunities she has to kill where she doesn't kill because she recognizes that there's an opportunity to show mercy. I think of the Going around telling everybody to stop. And she runs out there, puts herself on the line, yells at him, tell him to stop fighting. Yeah, so in World War I, she gets to fight under her real name. She's earned her place. She's awarded the French uh, Legion of Honor twice. Uh, she was also given the French Croix de Guerre, which is you know their highest honor. The British Medal, the Most Distinguished Order of St. Michael. The Serbian Miloš Oblic Medal. Uh, she's the most decorated female combatant in the history of modern warfare, uh, recorded warfare. Uh, so... Toward the, uh, the middle and end of World War I, the Serbians are driven off, especially once the Bulgarians enter the war. Serbia is driven off. What's left of the Serbian army has to be evacuated from Serbia, and they form a Serbian brigade that fights uh, alongside like the French and the Italians. And uh, she ends up, I think, going to fight on the Italian front. Um, but she's actually offered by the French... She's offered a military pension and a pretty comfortable life if she wants to settle in France. But she chooses instead to go back to Serbia, where she's largely forgotten for most of her life. Epic guitar solo, as always. Look 
Yeah, yeah. October. Oh, that's crazy. Such, such an amazing story, and I really wish more people knew about it. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what happened to her after this. So uh, at the time, she was awarded the French Croix de Guerre. She was the only female who had been given that honor. Uh, after the war, she was offered the chance to live in France, as I mentioned, receive a hefty pension. Uh, but she chose to stay in Ster Serbia and live in Belgrade, where she worked in the postal service. In the interwar period between World War I and World War II, she ended up working as a cleaning lady at the State Mortgage Bank, where eight years after eight years, she was promoted to the cleaning, uh, f to cleaning the office of the general manager. So here's a legit super war hero cleaning offices after the war. She got married, had a da daughter, divorced, and adopted three more daughters. Uh, her achievements largely languished in obscurity during this time. Now here's. Something I forgot to mention about her story, when Serbia was occupied during World War II, she refused to attend a banquet uh, that was held by a uh, prominent Nazi collaborator, collaborator uh, and uh, who was prime minister of the puppet government. And because of that, and possibly for some other reasons, she was arrested and sent to a concentration camp for almost a year. Even after the war, then, she remains in obscurity, although thou, now she receives a state pension from the new communist government. Uh, and she starts showing up in her old age, wearing her medals at celebrations. Uh, and this caught the, the attention of the media and the public, who finally start digging into her story and find out who she was. And so she was granted in 1972 a small apartment near Belgrade City Assembly. Uh, she died in the apartment a year later at the age of 85 after suffering three strokes while knitting, according to her grandson. She's buried in the Belgrade New Cemetery. Uh, in 2013, in recognition of her importance as a war hero, her remains were moved from the family plot to the Alley of the Greats, which is a line in the song uh, who rests, you know, talks about her being in the Alley of the Greats, uh, where nationally important people in Serbia are buried. So this is like, um, you know, this is the Westminster Abbey for Serbia. This is the Arlington National Cemetery. This is that place of honor where they're finally recognizing who she was. Uh, they put up some monuments. They renamed the street uh, after her in Belgrade. And now, finally, people are starting to remember the story of Maluka Savic. Uh, somebody I'd love to know more about and maybe do a more in-depth video about someday. Because uh, I think she deserves it. And, and, you know, she was not the only woman who fought in World War I. There were dozens of other women in various nations who fought during the Great War. And probably in every war in history. I know in the American Civil War, there were many women like this. There was a woman who was awarded the Medal of Honor in the American Civil War. The only one in history was eventually taken from her because she was female. And then reinstated uh, about 50, 40, 50 years ago. Um, but these are stories that we need to know more about. So I'll put a link in the description uh, to Indy Nidell's video about her, give you a little bit more of the history. Also, please check out my video about another great hero of the war, uh, Alvin York. Thanks for watching.